South Florida senior quarterback Quinton Flowers leading a dynamic offense into the Big Easy tonight. And it's been a terrific first season for Bulls head coach Charlie Strong. His 16th ranked South Florida Bulls in New Orleans tonight to put the nation's longest winning streak on the line. They've won 11 straight. They'll be facing the green wave of Tulane. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. And the American has been the best conference in the group of five this year. Three teams this week ranked in the top 25. USF, UCF, which won today over Navy, and Memphis. The winner of the American is likely going to get the New Year's Six invite. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to New Orleans. Alongside my partner, former San Diego State All-American Kirk Morris, and I'm Clay Matvick. It's been exactly one year to yeah. the day since South Florida lost a football game. It's just been a great start to the tenure of Charlie Strong. Well, I think it's been the momentum of winning last year. That carries over this year. 11 straight victories. And it's been consistency. 23 consecutive games of scoring 30 points or more. But then it's up front is where they get it done. You look at the rushing defense, rushing offense for USF. They're in the top 10 in both of them. Only two other teams in FBS, Alabama and Georgia, have done that. To me, it's all about that, the foundation of this team, which is on the offensive line and the defensive line. And they have a great guy reading the offense, and that's Quinton Flowers. 92 career total touchdowns, and there are only a handful of guys in college football history who have rushed and passed the way this guy has done a quarterback. Well, he's a traditional, true, dual-threat quarterback. He can do it on the ground. He can do it through the air. But I've said it before. I love this man's leadership. You look at the leadership of what he does. As Quentin Flowers go, so does the USF Bulls go. And we'll see how it goes here tonight in New Orleans as they go for their 12th straight win here at Gilman Stadium. Number 16, South Florida and Tulane kicking it off next in the American. Six wins as USF starter bringing the Bulls on the road to take on Tulane. Last year's American Conference Offensive Player of the Year. <laughs> He's in a great mood tonight. It should be. I mean, the, everything yeah. has gone so well for this team. I, they haven't played their best football yet, according to Charlie Strong. We'll see if we see that tonight. Willie Fritz. Second-year head coach for Tulane. Three and three, one and one in the American. Beat Army and Tulsa in back-to-back -back weeks, but a big setback last week at FIU did not play well. We'll see if Tulane can have a better effort tonight. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that killed them last week. They felt that that was a game that they could have won and should have won. They just didn't play well, but it's always better to be at home. That's why they have the confidence going into this week that they can go out and have a better showing versus USF. USF plagued by slow starts and a lot of penalties despite that 6-0 record. So we'll see if tonight they're clean to start the game. South Florida won the toss. They elected to defer. Sherman Beatty will be back deep, number three. Devin Glenn also back to return for the green wave as Emilio Nadelman gets it on the tee. This is the first meeting between these programs. They've been in the American together since 2014. They finally meet here tonight on a muggy night in New Orleans. Tulane trying to pull a top 25 upset for the first time since 1984. That's 50 straight losses against the top 25. And the opening kick is going to bounce through the end zone. And Tulane will start at the 25-yard line. Jonathan Banks, the junior quarterback out of Houston, a former Kansas State Wildcat, played Juco last year. He is a dual threat, much like Quinton Flowers, 
but he's coming off an off week at FIU. Yeah, he had an off week, but this is the one thing that they said, bringing in a guy like Jonathan Banks, he's never ran the option before coming into this season. So this has been a process for him, but halfway through the year, they finally feel like it's starting to click. But like you mentioned, a bit of a setback last week. This is a big game for him to get back on track against this USF defense. Dontrell Hilliard, the senior running back out of Baton Rouge, starts behind Jonathan Banks in the pistol. Taryn Ankala, the receiver, goes in motion. It will be Hilliard, though, with the first touch, and he'll pick up four. Yeah, Jonathan Banks last week at FIU, like you said, first interception of the season, lost a fumble. He generated very little offense, and how the quarterback goes in this offense for Tulane is going to decide kind of how everything goes for the green wave. He's got to make the right decisions, too. He's got to read this defense. What will they give him? Because they're going to try to take some things away from him. He has to find the weak spot. It's easier said than done. It's a run heavy spread option attack. But they're going to send three receivers to the right. Banks out of the gun on second down is going to keep it. And he's going to run for the first down. Jamon Thomas, the free safety, brought him down, but it's a gain of 10. And Banks is slow to get up, but he is now finally to his feet as we take a look at the impact players presented by Chick-fil-A. Yeah, you look at Tulane there, Dontrell Hilliard, Sherman Beatty. Both guys are going to be influential today because they have to touch the football many times as possible, even on special teams and on defense for USF. It's Augie Sanchez, Mazzy Wilkins, two of the seniors on this team that they do everything. Force fumbles, interceptions, you, you do it, they, they, you name it, they do it. Now this could be a big blow to Tulane early. As he is being attended to by the medical staff. Jonathan Banks enrolled at Tulane in January. Quickly got up to speed in this offense. The triple option as you talked about, Kirk. And he is being aided toward the sideline. Jonathan Brantley is the backup quarterback, and we're going to see him now. Yeah, I think it's something that happened to do with uh, one of his fingers. I think he's holding the uh, the right hand, which we know is his throwing hand. And if that's affected, obviously he won't be able to throw the football effectively tonight. But you already see early on, he, he was going to be a big factor for what they want to do offensively, getting him on edges, getting him on the outside to the perimeter. Now we'll see what Brantley can do. Jonathan Brantley, the sophomore, also out of Houston. 12 career games, three starts. Started the game last month at Oklahoma when Banks was hurt. And he's called on here on the third play for Tulane. It's a draw play. Brantley will run as well. He gets across the 45 to the 46. Good run on first down of seven yards. This is a run-heavy offensive attack. But obviously, if Banks, you know, got his hand, his throwing hand knocked up, uh, that it, it, it's going to really limit him. Well, you got to think about this. Doug Roos, the offensive coordinator. Look, your quarterback is out. Your starter in Banks for right now. So how do you get Brantley going in this game? That's why I think the first call you saw there was an easy run. Get him going. You get some positive yards on first down. You may see him put it back in Brantley's hands again here on second. Zone read right up the middle. And there's Hilliard. And that's going to be close to a first down. Dontrell Hilliard, nearly 2,500 career rushing yards and 26 rushing touchdowns. And they're going to move the chains. First down at 10 from the 49 for Tulane on their opening series. Hey, positive yards, first and second down. You got to win them. You win first down, you win second down, you feel pretty good. And so far, we talked about this yesterday with the coaches at Tulane. This is going to be a very slow-paced offense. They are not going to rush it. They want to limit that USF offense from being on the field. So you're going to see them take this play clock down to inside five almost every single play. Hilliard again. You get four. Yeah, Doug Roos talking about that. The, the pace of play was going to be a big part of the game plan for the Green Wave. And this, this is how you win against a team like USF. We talked about it in our open. They are very strong against the run. So what do you do? You try to get as many as you can on first down, but just watch the play clock on every single play. They are not in a hurry at Tulane here. It's going to be a slow pace, very slow, and make sure that the defense is in what you want to run your next play with. 
Second down and seven for the Green Wave. And Brantley hands off to Hilliard. This time, the USF defense stacks him up quickly and forces him back for a loss of one. Deidre and Sinat and Bruce Hector, the two big guys on that interior line with the stop. Jonathan Banks coming back in for Tulane. Good to see. Yeah, good to see, especially on this down and distance, a third and long. You need your starter back in the game. So we'll see if they put it in the air. I like the way they've been doing it. It's just a run, run, run mentality. But on third down, which they weren't good at last week, only 2 of 11, let's see if they put it in the air on the first third down opportunity. Charles Jones, the tight end, goes in motion. Play fake. And in trouble is Banks. He is going to be dropped by Augie Sanchez, the middle linebacker. That's going to be a loss of two. Augie Sanchez, the senior from St. Pete. It's about collapsing the pocket, and that's what USF does. They get to get guys up. It's penetration. I like Mike Love, the not number 98, the defensive end. He just gets up in there and tries to cause havoc. He wants to make chaos. And that time, the rest of the guys cleaned up. Like I mentioned, the D-line muddies it up, and guys like Sanchez in the second level come clean it up. Dearness Johnson is back to return this punt for USF. Zachary Block with the boot, and it's a good one. It's going to bounce at the 12-yard line, check back up, and come back out of bounds near the 15. So Charlie Strong's defense stopping Tulane in midfield. They're going to take back over on offense. Quinton Flowers, he's had a tough upbringing. He lost his mom, Nancy, to cancer when he was 17. He's raising his daughter, Amaya, who's just a cutie, by the way. She's one and a half right now. Picture in front of the house where his father was killed when Quinton was just a boy. And Dietrich Nichols, his best friend, who's a terrific player in the USF secondary. They grew up together in Miami. Dearness Johnson. He is going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. Quentin Flowers, great numbers for his career. 92 touchdowns responsible for. They swing it outside to Tyree McCants. McCants with a catch and run for the first down. He is a wide receiver, but he's built like a fullback. Kirk. Yeah, he's a big guy, 5'11", 235. But this is the part where they say the offense is starting to come along. It's fast paced. It's get the ball out of Quinton Flowers' hands early. Let those guys make some guys miss on the outside. They throw it quickly to the near side. Marquez Valdez Scantling, the leading receiver the last couple of years for USF, and they move the chains. Donnie Lewis pushing him outside. This is offensive coordinator Sterling Gilbert going with tempo right away. Yeah, it's tempo, tempo. This is part of the script. They want to see how does Tulane line up to the formation so far. Play fake outside. McCants can't hold on to it. Second down. Now it's, it's an up-tempo offense, Kirk, but it's very run-heavy. They average 60 runs per game. Well, that, that's the illusion. When you think of a spread offense, you think of, oh, they're about to throw it around the ballpark, which they've done so far early in his drive. But this is really a power-running team inside, especially when they get that tight end right near the line of scrimmage. Flowers fakes the pitch. Finds room along the near sideline. He's across midfield. Finally tackled at the 47-yard line by the free safety Chase Kirshen, the true freshman. I think we don't talk enough about the vision of Flowers there. He starts left but just feels his way all the way back. Just a terrific job by the quarterback finding the open seam. Gain of 14. Now Dearness Johnson. Another good run. Boy, they're getting offense in chunks. Eight yards on that play. Uh, I like the finish, too, by Johnson, just lowering his shoulder. But right after the play, they're right back on the line of scrimmage. If you're too late, you can't even catch your breath, making the, de the defense really vanilla. You can't change your personnel. Play action. Valdez Scantling on the screen, and Tulane read it well. It'll bring up third down in about two. Roderick Teamer, the strong safety, number two, 
Made the stop, no game. Yeah, good job on the perimeter there, Tulane. They understand that it's going to be an east and west game as far as running to the football. You got to take right angles. That time, Teamer came inside out, made the tackle. But one of those tackles gets missed, and that's where USF can hurt you with the big play. I'm third and two, right up the middle, Johnson. I don't think so. Rajon Marbley, the middle linebacker, the senior and leading tackler for Tulane, brought him down. And it'll be a fourth down decision here for Charlie Strong. Yeah, you mentioned Rajon Marbley, four tackles for loss on the year, but they're right back on the ball. First down, Johnson. USF rushing for 293 yards per game, eighth best in the nation, but there's a penalty marker here. I think we may get a face mask in there. I thought I saw. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. The foul was on number 94. Sean Wilson, the nose tackle with the face mask. I, mean, I thought I saw Johnson's face mask get pulled. Yeah, he got a nice little grip of that face mask. Sean Wilson didn't. Got to let that face mask go. Jared Franklin, the injured Green Wave player, making his way to the sideline. South Florida ready for the 10th play of their opening drive here in the first quarter. Quentin Flowers fakes the handoff, dancing around in the backfield. So elusive, making the Tulane defense look silly. Takes it in. And that's more of a credit to Flowers and, and less of an insult to Tulane. A lot of defenses are going to look bad against this guy. Yeah, that better be your Sports Center top 10 highlight because you watch Flowers as he makes number 36, Chase Kirshen, the freshman, just shakes him out of his boots. I mean, that's supposed to be a tackle in the hole, but Flowers showing you not only the vision, the elusiveness, and then the speed to get to the end zone. That's why he's one of the best college football players in the game right now. Emilio Nadelman comes on for the extra point. And the opening series results in a touchdown for the South Florida Bulls. And then 23 straight games of 30 points or more. And USF already on the board here in the first quarter. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year for Quinton Flowers. He showed us on that last series, Kirk, why he is a dark horse Heisman candidate. Yeah, it's about him setting up blocks. It's the vision that he has. He, he possesses vision where he sees something that to us just isn't there. He finds a way to get to the open hole, and, man, it's, it's electric once he gets into the open field. Charlie Strong recruited him when he was a head coach at Louisville to be a defensive back, but he ended up being his starting quarterback after all. And Willie Taggart, of course, liked him as a quarterback. Now, you just watch the hesitation move. It's one, two. He sets two guys up, makes them both miss. And once he gets in the open field, he doesn't even have to turn the Jets on. He just cruises for a score. That's a quarterback that knows he's got some athletic ability. Sherman Beatty on the return for Tulane. Lowers his head, gets across the 25, and we go to the studio and an update with Chris Cotter. All right, Chris, thanks a lot. Yeah, you know, it hasn't been as crazy of a week so far, so far, so far. <laughs> as it was last week in college football, but uh, could be some great games yet tonight and some great finishes. Well, that's how you got to bring it every single week, and especially you watch the Oklahoma State-Texas finish. It, it's, it's just a crazy weekend of college football that every play counts. 
So Jonathan Banks, who had his throwing hand racked up on the first series, comes out here to start series number two for Tulane. Dontrell Hilliard gets the handoff. Pickup of two. Uh, we don't want to guess what happened to Jonathan Banks' right hand, but we do see more tape on there than there was at the beginning of the game. Yeah, I can tell you this. For me, as a former player, when I see tape, especially at the bottom and at the top of a finger, that to me, possible dislocation or possibly just a little bit of a sprain, you put the tape on to keep the finger in place. And I mean, I've got some bad fingers from playing over the top. So <laughs> I see I, that. Yeah, I don't want to show you. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's the reason why you put the tape on, to so just to stabilize that finger. Play fake. And Banks is complete to Jabril Cluis, junior receiver. That's the first pass for Tulane tonight. They don't average a ton. They make their money on the ground. They average 14 pass attempts per game. It's just not the strength of the offense. No, he only completed five passes a week ago. So just that first completion, I can tell you the confidence is beaming from him. He's now rolling a little bit. He had the big run earlier to start the game that he was injured on. But that pass right now, now it makes the USF defense may have to play a little bit soft to see, this, to see the runners in front of them. Green wave first and 10 from their own 40. Draw play, Banks. He's elusive too, slides to the 45, and he's down after a pickup of four yards. You know, Charlie Strong's defense has really improved under Brian Jean-Marie. They're going to have their hands full with Jonathan Banks tonight, provided that hand doesn't keep flaring up yeah, here that, tonight. Yeah, that finger is dislocated, man. He's trying to put it back in, and you get that tape around it. But that first pass, that completion that he had there is showing me, not showing any ill effects of that finger. Here's Sherman Beatty, the senior out of Metairie. Get a couple. So it'll be third down and fairly long for Tulane. Third down has not been their friend this year, 34%. It's 100th in the nation. Well, especially with an experienced secondary, like you look at with USF. Now, I mentioned the guys up front on their defensive line. They take away the run, but I mentioned it earlier with Banks completing that, pers that first pass. They may have to take some shots down the field. I wouldn't be surprised if you just try to take a shot at the end zone here. You got man-to-man -man coverage on both sides at the bottom and the top. I wouldn't mind taking a shot, trying to get a big play early on. Might be a free play. Nope. Yep, penalty flags. And that's a first down for Sherman Beatty. Well, oh, there was a USF player offside. Outside. Defense. Number 99, penalty is declined. Result of the play, first down. Kevin Bronson, the D tackle. So Tulane knew they had a free play. Free play, and they ran it. But you're going to have to see this defensive line. They get off on the ball, and that time, just listening, trying to anticipate the snap count. It's a good job by Banks, varying the count just a little bit, throwing off that USF defensive line. Charles Jones, the tight end in motion. Banks hands off to Hilliard. Gets to the outside. Really close to a first down. Another penalty flag on the play. A couple of them. Holding. Offense. This Number is 64. coming back. And it's on the left guard, Corey Dublin. There were two fouls on the play. Holding. Offense. Number 64. Offside. Defense. Number 41. Those penalties were offset. We'll replay first down. Uh, so Tulane gets a break. Yeah, first you get the holding call, but we, we saw at the bottom of the screen you had the offsides, but this is what a good, a good job of what the USF defensive line, I can't stop singing their praises. They get off the ball and they lock their offensive players out. They lock them out, try to shed them, and that time Dublin just got caught up in there, held on. First down, Tulane from the 44. We're going to get offside again.
Big smile on the face of our referee, Tracy Jones. He's getting a lot of air time early yeah, on in this game. That's why. <laughs> a lot of air time. They're discussing it, but I, I thought I saw someone in the neutral zone. Me too. Before that play started. We've seen already. It's thir three plays in a row. There's no foul on the play. Huh. It's, it's not what we saw. <laughs> the down will be replayed. First down. Well, so, South Florida's had a real problem with penalties, especially early in games, but they're going to pick this flag up. Yeah, I thought I saw someone. Looks like Kevin Bronson, but they're saying he got back. Well, they're crowding that line of scrimmage, I can tell you that. Look they at the sure USF are. helmets. Those gold helmets are right there on the football. Not giving them any room for error if they get off sides. Second drive into USF territory for the Green Wave. First one, though, stalled out. They had to punt. Here's Hilliard taking it inside the 40. The second down and four coming up for Tulane. We'll kick off your week seven with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. As the Patriots and Falcons get set for their Super Bowl rematch, Tom Brady and Matt Ryan sat down for an inside look at the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history. Countdown also streaming live on the ESPN app. Mm. Falcons. The Raiders had a big uh, and interesting win on Thursday night. Yeah, you talk about officials having airtime. <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, that really. ending was about five or six penalties in a row, but the Raiders pulled it off. A couple of untimed downs at the end. Hilliard can't step out of the snare at the 41. Mike Love, the USF defensive end, one of Charlie Strong's favorite players. He immediately bought into this new coaching staff yeah. and what Charlie Strong was preaching right out of the gate, and he's played well this year. Yeah, I've been waiting to call his name all day. He's Love, and he's not going to show the opposing team any love. He's the team leader in sacks, but it's about the way that he gets up the field. He's not a big guy, only 252, but he gets up the field gets off blockers and he makes plays like he did on that last one. Just saw Brian Jean-Marie, eighth straight year working under Charlie Strong. First year as defensive coordinator, but they can't stop Dontrell Hilliard here from a big gain. He gets to the 25, a gain of 15 for the senior Tulane running back. Now, I can't say enough about Dontrell Hilliard. This is his 28th start at running back, and that's called experience. He sets up his blocks. He understands the system in just a few, you know, a season and a half, basically, this offense has really helped him out. It, it seems that he's taken his game to the next level, and I think one of the reasons why is because he's trusting his blockers, allowing them to get their hat on a hat, and he makes a nice little cut and gets into the open field. On first down, they feed it to him again. Bouncing to the outside, the quarterback out there throwing a block. He gets to the end zone, but there's a penalty marker down behind the play. Number 52, 10-yard penalty, first down. John LeGlue, the right tackle with the penalty, and this is coming back. It's actually Dominique Briggs, the right guard, number 52 with the penalty. Yeah, they got Briggs, I think. It was just a, a nice little design run. It was just a cutback. And sometimes when you get those cutback plays, you may get a guy holding on just a little bit too long. Yeah, the right guard, 52 in there. He's up. They caught it right at the end here. That's a tough play to call, you know, especially getting an open field like that. I don't know what the the officials, they see that hand locked out, hold on to the jersey. They're going to call that every time. Play fake, spun around and sacked as Banks. Jawan Brown, one of Mike Brown's backups at defensive end, comes in for the big play. It'll be second down and long. That's a loss of five on the play, fourth tackle for loss tonight for the Bulls. Uh, USF, they come at you, and no pun intended here, they come at you in waves. I mean, this is a guy, third on the depth chart, able to just get off the ball and just wreak havoc. That's what they're taught at USF. Get off the ball, get up the field, and get in the backfield. 
try to stir it up a little bit. And Juwan Brown going up, finding the quarterback, tossing him for a sack. This defense, five straight quarters without allowing a touchdown. Darius Bradwell is going to get his first carry tonight for Tulane. Picks up a handful before Thomas, the free safety, brings him down. Third down and long here for Tulane. But it's been a good start for South Florida here as they win quarter number one. An 11 game winning streak on the line for South Florida. They've got a touchdown from their star quarterback already in the bank. 7 0 after one. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the Mazda CX 5. Driving matters. And Wendy's Fresh Never Frozen Beef Hamburgers, the official hamburger of the NCAA. Six straight quarters for the USF defense without allowing a touchdown, but Tulane ready for its 12th play of this series. 7 0 South Florida, number 16 in the country this week. Jonathan Banks with a sore right hand dumps it off short. And it's incomplete. Dontrell Hilliard hit as he tried to make the catch. He was blown up by Greg Reeves. And Devin Abraham, number 20, with that shot. Yeah, they're all over it. And Reeves, he, he saw it. He wanted to go get it. 6'2, 243, sophomore. I don't know if y'all call him a defensive end. He's, you know, kind of at the bottom there. He just kind of sneaks around a little bit. But they find a way to put him in the right spot to make plays. And I figured this would be four down territory because they don't really, they like to go for it on fourth down. Pooch punt. Jonathan Banks trying to pin USF deep, and they will at the one. Taryn Ankalad kills it at the one yard line. Not a bad pooch punt for Jonathan Banks. Tell what we want to know. How big is your army? A hundred thousand. Yeah. If you want the rain, then we coming down. Quentin Flowers. Already a touchdown running tonight. You can see the uh, quarterback career rushing yards for players out of the state of Florida. Even more rushing yards than Tim Tebow had. USF pinned deep on the pooch punt from Jonathan Banks. They get a little breathing room there from Darius Tice. Harris with the tackle. Quentin Flowers, 10 passing touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns now this year. A running play, Tice again, team's leading rusher. But it's a three-headed monster with Tice, Johnson, and Flowers. Going to bring up third down and about seven for USF. Let's see if Sterling Gilbert, the offensive coordinator, allows Flowers to throw the ball here. They've kept it on the, on the ground for the most part this game, but at some point you got to start taking shots down the field, making plays. Let's see if they dial up a nice little pass to get Flowers on the run. Make a plays out of the pocket. Two receivers to either side. Flowers looking to throw the out route incomplete. And another penalty flag. Intended for Tyree McCants. I want to see where this penalty is called at because if that's holding in the end zone, that's a possible safety. You're right. Just see where this call is at. Personal foul. Shot block. Offense. Number 73 and number 6. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Well, it's declined. Fourth down. Jeremy Hall, number 73. And Darius Tice, the running back, number six, combining on that chop block. Yeah, Jeremy Hall is a guy that popped on tape, meaning that I watched him, and he's a very physical guy. That block occurred outside of the end zone, so no safety there, but kind of a mix up there in coverage. Sometimes you got one guy supposed to take the blitzers, the guy take the down guy, a little mix, a little mix up. First punt for Jonathan Hernandez. He had some pressure, but he got it away, and it's a great kick. 
Dontrell Hilliard lets it bounce over his head. Hernandez leading the American Conference in punting average at almost 44 yards per kick. This is a 61-yard punt to flip the field. The ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at home or on the go. Download the app to start streaming now. Clay Matvick, Kirk Morrison back here in New Orleans. 13.29 to go before half. Tulane taken back over. Down 7-0 to USF. Jonathan Banks. And the Green Wave start this series from the 35. Only the third pass attempt tonight for the Green Wave. And it's caught by Darnell Mooney. Pickup of eight yards on first down. But this USF defense, Kirk, has really improved from last year under first-year coordinator Brian Jean-Marie. This unit ranked 120th in total defense last year, 12th coming into this game. Well, he didn't really have to do a lot as far as in terms of play, meaning that the guys, they just bought in. They bought into the system. They bought into the scheme. It's about playing hard but very opportunistic. They like to turn the ball over, especially getting interceptions. There's Dante Hilliard finding a lane to run. Gets to the 49 first down for the Green Wave. USF's defense, especially against the run, has shown yeah. improvement this year. They give up the first down there, but, you know, Six straight quarters now without allowing a touchdown for this group. It's a confident bunch. <laughs> it's very confident. And the one thing about it is they, they got guys up front who they rotate. Ten guys on that defensive line. So they come at you and they come at you. It's like they're just so relentless. They're going to have to play big today against this two-lane two -line offense. Hilliard bouncing off bodies. Nowhere to go that time. Greg Reeves, number 41, the former walk-on for USF. Put on scholarship the last week of camp, having a tremendous year. He made the stop. So second down and 10 for Tulane, which has had a Jekyll and Hyde offense the last couple of games. Here against Tulsa a couple of weeks ago, scored on all seven of their first half possessions. But last week at FIU, they had only 90 yards in the first half. And so far, a tough time of it against USF. On second down, incomplete. That should have been caught by Ankalad, the leading receiver for Tulane. He leaves it on the turf, third down and long. And that can't happen. Ankalad, he's got to make that catch. you got to help out your quarterback. We saw him earlier with the finger issue right now. Him, right now, it doesn't seem like it seems to affect him. He's still got a nice little zip on the pass. you got to help your quarterback out there. And at some point, offensive coordinator Doug Roos, he's got to take a shot down the field. You're not going to be able to execute play after play after play they need a big play and I don't know if it's a trick play you can start pulling out the bag of tricks but if you want to pull off the upset you got to take a shot down the field let's we'll see what the olive and blue do here on third down and 10. Cluis goes in motion stops in the slot looking left as Banks now flushed to the right in trouble gets away and he's got the first down Jonathan Banks with a great run to keep the drive alive for Tulane, a pickup of 11. Yeah, you got to like the point at the end. You don't think this kid wants to pull off the upset? He sees that there's nobody downfield. He just pulls it and runs. And watch how he protects the football and delivers a nice little blow at the end. He knows this is a big game. A lot of people watching. Mr. Banks putting on a nice little run there. Third drive. It's moved into USF territory, but they haven't capitalized yet. Oh, busted play. Hilliard trying to bail him out as he scoops it up off the turf and gets back to the line of scrimmage. That snap never got back to Banks. Yeah, almost disaster right there. Ball didn't get up, but this is what Tulane wants to do. This is a very slow-paced offense. <laughs> and if you're watching, it's like they're going to take their time. They want to let this play clock get all the way down. It's about limiting the opportunities for the USF offense. It's keeping Quinton Flowers, the explosiveness that he has, keeping him on that sideline. So far, Tulane doing a terrific job. On second and 10, wanting to throw. Banks taking a shot deep, and it's too deep. Intercepted. Devin Abraham picks it off.
off inside the five. His fourth interception of the year. And this is how South Florida Kirk has been beating people this year. Yeah, you got to take your chances at some point, but. But when you take those chances, you got to be able to read the coverage. That ball floated. And now when you let that ball float, you let Abraham go out and make a play. It's his fourth interception. The team's now 16th INT USF Bulls. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Chevy. The only brand to earn J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs, two years in a row. Sean King, the former Tulane star quarterback, now on the USF coaching staff. He led Tulane to that amazing 12-0 season back in 1998. He finished 10th in the Heisman voting. First true dual threat quarterback in the country. First to post 3,000 passing yards and 500 rushing yards in the same season. And now he's watching another great dual threat quarterback in Quinton Flowers, who's complete to the outside to Darnell Solomon. 16th interception for the USF defense that leads the country Kirk. So just watch Devin Abraham. He locates the ball and they, this is what they do. This is what USF does. They take away the football, especially when it's in the air. Dearness Johnson on the run. As Rajon Marbley makes another tackle. 16 interceptions most in the country. 19 takeaways, second in the nation, at least two to eight takeaways in all six games. And USF does not have a turnover trophy on the sideline <laughs> like so many teams. Uh, they need to get one. It's the point system. That's a big, it's big points when you get the INT. Johnson brought down by Franklin on the edge. I don't think so. He's going to be just a little short of the first down. Monday Night Football, a big NFC East matchup between the Redskins and the Eagles. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN. The Eagles won the first meeting in the season opener. And an Eagles win this time, and Philly looks like a shoe-in to win the NFC East as the punting unit comes out for the South Florida Bulls. Second three and out for USF. Donnie Lewis back to return for Tulane. Hunting from the end zone, Hernandez, who had a 60-yard punt last time, out of bounds. We'll see where they mark this. It's going to be the 48-yard line of Tulane, where the green wave will take over when we come back. The ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere well, this triple option has controlled the play now, Tulane doesn't have any points to show for it yet but they kept the ball away from the dangerous USF offense and Tulane goes back to work near midfield down seven to nothing Jonathan Banks the quarterback hands off Sherman Beatty takes it right up the middle for a two-yard pickup Let's get an update with Chris on Penn State, Michigan. Yeah, I can't disagree with you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Kirk, do you think he could essentially win it tonight with well, a big show? You got to think, we remember the big games, and this is a big game against Michigan under the lights the wide out he keeps when that game is on when those lights are on Saquon Barkley he's a star definitely showing off tonight Penn State and USF among the eight unbeatens coming into the weekend this black makes a big play Josh black the defensive end that's going to be a loss Darius Bradwell brought down that's the fifth tackle for loss already for Charlie Strong's defense tonight Charlie Strong, yes, he walked into a good situation yeah. this year, but yeah, I, I think there's a sense of vindication for him, you know, after the tough times at Texas. 19 days. 
19 days what he told us that he didn't have a job and he sat around he said I'm, I'm a football coach and this USF opportunity came about and he said I had to jump on it defense has always been a Charlie strong calling card trying to get off the field here on third down and they may have done it but Willie Fritz does like to go for it on fourth down a fourth and one coming up Bradwell about a yard short We'll keep the offense out on the field. At the 43 yard line. I think you got to go for it here. You're trying to go for the upset, but keep the ball in your quarterback's hands. Good things have happened when the ball's in Banks' hands. Bradwell. I think he's short. And I think you're right. And Augie Sanchez recovers. He made the tackle, excuse me. And so it'll be fourth, uh, first down for USF. Augie Sanchez, one of the beard boys who hasn't shaven in months. But well, I love good linebacker play. 43 Sanchez, seek, find, and destroy. Augie Sanchez. Taco Bell, the proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. We're at Yulman Stadium. This is the fourth year of this on-campus stadium here in New Orleans, the home of the Tulane Green Wave. They're in a ball game with number 16 USF, but Marquez Valdez Scantling, the wide receiver, has first down yardage out at the 40 of Tulane, but there are penalty markers on the field. 17-yard run. We'll see what the call is. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number three, 10 yards penalty. First down. It's on the wide receiver, Darnell Solomon. The block in the back for the Bulls. We talked about the penalty problems for USF this year. Now, they've been pretty good tonight. Believe it or not, just the first accepted penalty against USF, but they average 10 per game, and this is going to wipe out a nice play, but how about the block by Flowers? Oh, terrific block by Flowers, helping out his guy, Darnell Solomon, with the illegal block. Messed up a great effort by the quarterback, Flowers, showing you he's not just a quarterback. No, he's not a pretty boy. <laughs> he likes to get dirty. Flowers looking to throw. He's going to take a shot deep down the right side of the field for Valdez Scantling, and it lands incomplete. Real nice defensive coverage by Roderick Teamer, the senior out of New Orleans. No, just staying in phase and not panicking. That's a good job by Roderick Teamer Jr. He knows that the ball's on the way. He gets the head back. That's why there was no penalty. He turns the head back, and he's right there in great position. That's a quarter. That's a cornerback, not panicking. He's in phase, realizing that hey, you can't catch the ball if I'm right there in your mug. Good job, Teamer. Second down, and. 10 to go here for USF. Flowers wants to throw again. He's going to take a shot basically to the same place. Same result. D'Angelo Antoine, the intended receiver. Third down. Yeah, they're just trying to take shots down the field. They've got to make some plays. and They're out of rhythm. They're out of sync. And this is more has to do with the two-lane offense. They, this is a ball control offense by two-lane. But by them being out there on the field for so much of this first half, it's kept the USF offense out of sync. They've been on the sideline sitting down, and then they come in, and what happens? You get a penalty. This is what's played USF in first half. It's been penalties to the slow starts. They average 43 points per game, 23 straight of 30 or more. Trying to convert here on third down and long, and Flowers is going to do it as he marches out at the 45-yard line of Tulane. So Flowers is able to keep this drive alive. The Bulls coming into this game tied with Chip Kelly's Oregon Ducks from 2011 through 2012 at 30 points per game, 23 straight games. And now Darius Tice is going to rip off a long run for a touchdown. 45 yards to the house. And just when you thought this offense was maybe finding some issues tonight getting on track Darius Tice comes to the rescue just when you think you could take a deep breath there goes Tice right up the middle 
showing off that speed. I mean, this is what USF, they try to find ways to create the big play. That was just a regular handoff. Tice getting to the second level and turning this thing into a track meet, but he crossed the line first. Emilio Nadelman comes on for the extra point. Blocked. Roderick Teamer got a piece of the extra point attempt, but Darius Tice ripping off a 45-yard touchdown run to make it 13 to nothing. USF leading. Darius Tice with his ninth rushing touchdown of the year. South Florida leads it out 13 to nothing. They didn't get the extra point. It was blocked by Teamer. With 5.18 to go here before the first half. We talked about that scoring streak of 30-plus points per game in 23 straight. Chip Kelly, who's in the studio with Chris and Jonathan, we'll see him at the half. His Oregon Ducks in 2011 through 2012 also at 23 straight. Let's get another update in the studio with Chris. Chris, thank you very much. College football playoff elimination game there between USC and Notre Dame? Yeah, I would have to say so. No one's talking Notre Dame yet. Why is that? Why is that? I think Notre Dame is just quietly, just quietly going about their business. It's Dontrell Hilliard for Tulane. The Irish have one loss, a one-point setback to number three Georgia. But is that a bad loss? No. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So you forget about him because he lost to Georgia earlier, but you may look later on if they continue to keep winning. It's not a bad loss. Not a bad loss at all. Well, Tulane has accomplished one thing. They have controlled the pace of this game, Kirk, which they wanted to do. They wanted to keep the ball away from Quinton Flowers and that USF offense. But they're down 13 to nothing. They need to get something going offensively. And there's a slant route to Taron Ancolot, and he breaks free. Gone. Touchdown. Taron Ancolot. Right on cue. The green waiver on the board. A 73-yard hookup for the score. You got to love the play. You love the call, but I love the quarterback having faith in the guy that dropped that previous pass earlier. They tried it earlier. He dropped it. But Banks comes right back to him. This time, Ancolade paying him off for trusting in him. First catch tonight for Ancolade, the leading receiver for Tulane, who went without a catch last week, ending a streak of 14 straight games with a catch. As Glover tacks on the extra point to make it 13-7. to Just the fifth touchdown pass this year for Jonathan Banks. This is a well-executed play. Yeah, you're going to get man-to-man -man on the outside, and the safeties are creeping into the box a little bit because they want to stop Banks. They want to stop the run, but you got to beat man-to-man -man coverage. And Ankalad off the line of scrimmage, beats his man, gets in front, catches it, and then turns on the Jets. I, I said it before, Banks threw that same pass earlier, and he dropped it. But he shows the faith in his receiver, comes right back to him, and Ankalad pays it off, making one guy miss. And then he's off to the races. You know, we sensed a lot of confidence in the voice of Willie Fritz when we talked to him yesterday, the head coach of the Green Wave in his second year of this rebuild. He went 4-8 and eight last year, 1-7 and seven in conference play. But he thinks this Tulane team this year, which has three wins coming into right. the night, can get bowl eligible with a strong finish. Well, they're not worried. Last week was a hiccup against FIU. They're upset at themselves because they know they didn't play well. So being back at home, and they know everyone out there is going to be watching. This is a USF team that is undefeated. 
So look, the odds are against them, but they're not afraid. And right now, they're running their game plan, I think, to perfection. Within a touchdown, this is going to bounce into the end zone. Zachary Block. And USF will start at the 25 with 4.29 to go here in the half. Kick off your week seven with Sunday NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Hard to believe it's week seven already in the NFL. Patriots and Falcons get set for that Super Bowl rematch. Plus, on the countdown, Randy Moss and another edition of You Got Moss, where he looks back at the best catches from college football over the weekend. The first Sunday without Aaron Rodgers. You ready yes. for that? You ready for the weekend the in Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin, Oof. and Superior, Wisconsin? They're not ready for it. I can guarantee you that. NFC North is up for grabs now. I'm just telling you. Giving you a heads up. Draw play. Here's Quentin Flowers. Already a touchdown run tonight. He's going to slide down about a yard and a half short of the first down marker. That's an eight-yard pickup for Flowers. When you watch Flowers, he just plays at a different pace. It's like a different game that he's playing just watching him operate this offense. First down for USF. As Dearness Johnson picks it up, he is a senior running back for the Bulls. The seniors really define this year's team for Charlie Strong. Yeah, it's, it's both of them. They go back and forth. It's We saw Tice earlier. Johnson gets one. It's just what they do, back and forth. Flowers takes it outside, and he gets to the 40-yard line. It'll be second down as we go to Chris for an update on what's coming up at the half. All right, Chris. Get a man down here. Four to lane. Roderick Teamer, who made some great plays in the last USF series before the Tice touchdown run and then ended up blocking the extra point. We believe it to be him who's down, number two. Yeah, it looks like you get rolled up on. Rajon Marbley, it looks like. Sometimes we call that friendly fire. You know, you're in the area you're trying to make a play. Your guy's trying to make a play, and that friendly fire. Flying to the football. Talked about the Tulane defense struggling last week at FIU. Gave up 220 yards through the air, 218 on the ground. They knew this was going to be the best offense they would face probably since Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma hung 56 on him in week three. I, you know, I think for the most part, Tulane has played well. They've executed a pretty good game plan through the first half so far. It's been about playing keep away. They've done that offensively. Now defensively, they need to stop here. They need a turnover. And they got to create one or two. Just USF, they are very protective of the football. They don't give it away easy. Flowers under pressure. Did he get it away? Rajon Marbley couldn't wrap him up before Flowers got rid of it. There's no foul for intentional grounding. There's an eligible receiver in the area. Third down. Tyree McCants was that receiver. Smart play by Flowers to avoid a huge loss. Yeah, that's a lot of lower body strength there. We don't talk about how strong this quarterback is. He's in the grasp of Marbley, but watch the strength as he's going down to get that ball. That's arm strength to get that ball not only to the receiver, but out of bounds. That's making a play there. Your senior quarterback saving yardage. Flowers, he's being chased again, going the wrong direction. And he'll fling it out of bounds one more time, this time a marker down. And now we got pushing and shoving. A helmet is off. Rajon Marbley lost his helmet. And then he gets into a pushing match with Eric Mays, the left tackle for USF. You know, watching this 
team USF on tape all week long. I mentioned up front, they're a very physical team, but they play to the echo of the whistle, not sometime a little bit past it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they like to mix it up a little bit, and you're seeing it right there. The plays, I mean, that play was all the way on the other side of the field, and you got guys getting after it. So you had a penalty before, and I see another There's two three. flags here. Yeah, there are <laughs> three flags out there. So I think they're trying to sort this out. There were multiple fouls on the play. Holding offense number six. That penalty is declined after the play. Offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct fouls on the defense number 55. On the offense number 56. Those penalties were offset. Fourth down. That is... That is number 56 and 55's first unsportsmanlike conduct. Server so Tulane defense getting it done. Yeah, that's a good job. And it looks. Number 56 on the defense. Number 55 on offense. 55 on offense, 56 on defense. It's one of those plays, too, where you get a look really excited. RJ, I'm sorry, PJ Hall getting in there, making a play for Tulane. But look, this is what you wanted to do on defense. You're forcing USF to punt the ball away. Terrific job by Tulane. Tulane's going to get it back with over three minutes to go here in the first half. Takes a Tulane roll oh, into risky. the end zone. <laughs> there was no foul for running into the kicker. The defender was blocked into the kicker. First down. Yeah, Hernandez wanted a flag. He's not going to get it. Dontrell Hilliard back on punt return for Tulane. Let that go over his head. We've seen him do that a couple of times tonight. Jacob Robertson, the regular punt returner. He is nicked up and not doing those chores tonight. Yeah, they didn't throw a flag there. You agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that was too close to call, but I'm more about the punt returns. We've seen a couple in the air, and it seems like Hilliard has like let them go over his head. The rule of thumb always as a punt returner is you put your heels on the 10-yard line, and anything over your head you let go. But he's out about the 20-yard line letting things bounce. It's a risky call by Hilliard letting that bounce in the end zone. It'll be Hilliard on first down for Tulane. Pushing the pile. Dontrell Hilliard, he's the workhorse for the green wave. Deidre Sanat makes the stop, but Hilliard over 100 yards on 19 carries at Oklahoma. 19 carries for 175 and four touchdowns against Tulsa. He will touch it a lot every time Tulane's on the field. Yeah, he plays with great power, too. Senior, six foot, 205 runs behind his pads. I mean, the, those pads are in front of him, and he's able to get good push, and he keeps those legs churning like he did that last play. And it'll be Hilliard again for the first down. Tulane driving to perhaps take the lead here at halftime. Yeah, but you still got to take chances down the field. I understand what you're trying to do, keep the USF offense over there on the bench on the sideline, but you got to continue to take shots. They did that on the previous drive with the big touchdown pass, but you got to find ways and find spots to get this football in USF territory. Now this is going to be a loss. Greg Reeves, the defensive end, tackles Hilliard. Reeves was a linebacker at Manatee High School in Bradenton, Florida. That's where Willie Taggart went to high school. Yeah, he's a joker player. And people are like, what is a joker? I mean, you just don't know what he's going to be. He could be a defensive end, outside linebacker. I've seen him drop a couple times. I mean, he does everything. I don't know what took so long for him to become a scholarship player because, I mean, I'm just watching him. He's been all over the field today. Sophomore having a great year. Second down at 15 for Tulane. We've got all their timeouts remaining. Banks is going to be ripped down. Penalty flag. Is this going to be a horse collar? Uh, Bronson brought him down to the turf, but might be an illegal tackle. Yeah, I think he got it right in behind that the name plate. That's a, a, a point of emphasis. I think that's why they're discussing it right now. There is no foul for horse collar tackle. The hand was not in the shoulder of the offensive player. Third down. Timeout. We've seen that a few USL. times tonight where we USL thought it was a penalty timeout. and then the flag was picked up. Not a penalty against USF. And it's the seventh tackle for loss for this Bulls D. Yeah, Bronson gets up the field and like that's a good job by the officials yes, coming together and talking it out. He got he was not in that nameplate area, right? Sort of by the 
the collar. He actually grabbed the jersey on the outside underneath underneath the arm. That's a good job of the officials coming together, discussing that, and not throwing the penalty on that one. So it'll be third down and 20 for Jonathan Banks in the green wave. Well, that was a great job by Bronson. I mean, we we're talking about the penalty, but that get off, and he got into the backfield before the – seemed like the ball was even snapped. So 134 to go here, third down and 20. Now, what does Willie Fritz do here? Play it conservatively or – yeah, you play conservative, you force USF to use another timeout, but you don't throw the ball here. So you're 13-7, you're going to run this ball, force them to take a timeout. You don't put this ball in the air. And nowhere to go. Mike Love, another tackle. Timeout. USF, their second charge timeout. Jonathan Banks was bottled up. It would be up. a 30-second timeout. Another tackle for loss, fourth down. Around the American. How about that win for Memphis on Thursday night? Houston had a 17-0 lead at halftime. Riley Ferguson, the Memphis QB, led six second-half touchdown drives. Kyle Postma, the Houston quarterback, Fumbled with 59 seconds left. Devastating loss for Houston. Memphis 3-1 in the American. As they won it in an amazing fashion. So Memphis, they're the favorites in the West. South Florida and UCF, which won earlier tonight. They're the favorites in the East. It could come down to that game on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. The war on I-4 between UCF and USF. It's going to roll inside the 40. And the Bulls will have a minute 17 to work with. Just one timeout remaining. So the American, USF, UCF, Memphis, they're all in contention for a New Year's Six bowl game. And it, it, it seems that it's going to come down to that. The winner of the American is going to get that invite, Kirk. Yeah, but you can't look too far ahead. And everyone's talking about the war on I-4. That's not until November 24th. You got a while, or, you know, Thanksgiving weekend. You got a Houston team that's, to me, that's a scary team. Very you know, scary. Every week you got to be worried about them. We saw Tulsa and what they can do. They, they've knocked some teams off if you don't come in ready to play. So that schedule for South Florida going down the stretch, Houston at UConn, Tulsa, UCF, man, it's they're going to get a New Year's Six Bowl opportunity. They're going to earn it. Quentin Flowers incomplete. That just didn't click. Flowers was way behind Darnell Solomon. And usually I'm, I'm a little, you try to get a positive play early on, maybe a run, get the clock going, get the guys in sync. And that incompletion now forces USF to now rethink possibly what they do here on second down. You, you got to hand it off, get a positive play going first before you start putting it in the air. Just four completions for Flowers. Wanted to throw it first, but steps up. And picks up a first down, a gain of 11 right out to midfield. See, you run the ball, and you get right back on the line of scrimmage. This is really their offense. This isn't a two-minute drill. This is their regular offense. Flowers dumps it off underneath to Johnson. It's going to be close to a first down. Emilio Nadelman, very good field goal kicker. 13 straight made field goals. For the Bulls, they're getting pretty close to his field goal range right now, but they're looking for a touchdown. Flowers taking a shot toward the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown, Solomon. Thirty-eight yard touchdown pass from Quinton Flowers, and the Bulls just ahead of the half strike. Just taking a shot, reading the defense. Got man-to-man -man coverage. And that's Quentin Flowers throwing it up there, letting this guy go make a play. That's Mr. Solomon. And 
And Nadelman gets that one through. Last extra point attempt was blocked. 20 to 7. South Florida. It's just a good job by Quentin Flowers realizing, look, I got man-to-man -man on the outside. I like that one-on-one -on -one matchup with my guy, Solomon, 6'3", 209. I'll take that any time. He just goes up, and look, this is a catch that Randy Moss would have loved to have seen. You talk about Moss and somebody, that's what that kind of catch was. He goes back over the defender and makes it. That's a big play, but a quarterback believing that his guy can go out and make the play, but he goes back, concentrates, Hauls in that football. I mean, that's concentration. He's going back behind the defender, wrestles it off his shoulder. That is a great and catch. Pulls it down. That's a mossy. That's a moss catch for yeah. you. <laughs> you got mossed. <laughs> Quentin Flowers, such a fun athlete to watch. Yeah, and we talked about before, dark horse, dark horse Heisman candidate. You know, it's going to be hard. <laughs> for a, a guy to come out of the group of five and win the Heisman Trophy Award, but he certainly could be one of the finalists. They continue to win. I think you have to put his name in the discussion, especially getting down to that world on I-4. That may be a game for him to uh, showcase everybody and get him a Heisman vote down to the Downtown Athletic Club. Of course, Saquon Barkley, as we've seen already tonight just give him the trophy now why, why yeah, wait? i mean he's already got why a couple wait? of touchdowns for penn state he's everybody's favorite to win the award i mean honestly can he lose the heisman trophy right now every big game he's come out and played well he's part of a team that's still undefeated they win tonight you start to see what can saquon barkley how can he lose it honestly i mean you look around college football sam darnold hasn't been what we expected him to be Lamar Jackson, we saw that story last year, but Barkley, man, he's he's the best player in college football, hands down. 42 seconds on the clock for Tulane. And there's a penalty. A couple of penalty flags on the field. Dontrell Hilliard on this carry gets to the 30. Legal formation. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. Legal formation. Some of the guys from outside of the Power Five who have been invited to the Downtown Athletic Club in recent years. Just haven't won it. What do they all have in common, though, especially the, the top four guys? They were all group of five sort of representatives. Jordan Lynch, remember at NIU, they played in the Orange Bowl. Kellen Moore, that Boise State team in the Fiesta. Colt Brennan with the Hawaii Warriors playing against, uh, I think it was Georgia that year in the bowl game. Hilliard to the 20. No gain. Another marker down. Penalties are coming fast and furious here late in the second quarter. In the formation. Offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. Back to back illegal formations for the green wave. And the fourth penalty against Willie Fritz's team. Yeah, they're just trying to close this half out and, and move on. But they've done, I felt, what they should have in this first half. That, just that, that last score by USF kind of hurt them. Of the first half. Trying to get that win streak to 12. Are the Bulls of South Florida, they have the lead at the half. And well on their way to 30 points or more. Quinton Flowers has looked good for the Bulls here tonight. It's a 20 to seven lead at the break here in New Orleans. Now Chris Chip and Jonathan with the Outback Halftime Report. Sounds from the new Darius Rucker album coming out. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Clay Matvick, Kirk Morrison back here in New Orleans. USF with a 20 to 7 lead over Tulane as we get started here in the third quarter. Quentin Flowers 
149 yards total offense in that first half. For the Bulls, a rushing touchdown, a passing touchdown. USF trying to extend that winning streak to 12 games, the longest current winning streak in the country. And they'll go to work at the 26-yard line. So your thoughts on that first half, which was yeah. interesting. It's what we've seen from USF pretty much all year long. It's what they do. They start off slow. It's been penalties, and it's been just out of sync. But I give a lot of credit to the two-lane offense for keeping the USF offense off the field. It's, it's yeah. one of those things that they're finally getting to a groove. And I thought late in that first half, the touchdown from Flowers to Solomon really helped out USF. I think they want to start better this second half. But I'm telling you, they got a lot of confidence going into halftime with that last drive. Yeah, and Tulane winning that time of possession battle in the first half. 21 minutes, 17 seconds to 8 minutes, 43 seconds for USF. And South Florida, which starts with the football, outscoring opponents big in the third quarter. And this is going to be a big run for Darius Tice. Tice, who had a touchdown run of 45 yards in the first half. Rips off another big run. And they go with tempo again. After the 35-yard run, it's Tice. He'll pick up one this time, but here they are back inside the two-lane 30-yard line. Yeah, they're starting faster than they did in the first half. And that first run already by Tice, they're already in business on the other side of the 50-yard line. Quinton Flowers. Has all day to throw. He's going to take a shot at the end zone looking for Valdez Scantling. What a catch! Marquez Valdez Scantling went over the top of Donnie Lewis and hauls it in. And just like that, South Florida strikes here early in the third. Three plays, three touchdowns. And I talked about it earlier. I got to keep giving my former teammate Randy Moss some love because. Quentin Flowers just throws this up to where his guy, Scantling, can go make a play. That's just, I want it more than you. He high points that. That's another Moss. A Moss is when you jump over the defender and grab yeah. the football. And Scantling, man, wow. That happened quick. Three plays. And USF already back on the board again. Scantling, who had one catch in the first half, catches his fourth touchdown of the year. And South Florida looking like they're in much more comfortable position to extend that streak of 30 points or more, which is currently at 23 straight. Flowers to Valdez Scantling, it's 27-7. Uh, they're not there yet, Kirk, but uh, you know, early on I think there was some concern that maybe they won't get to 30 tonight. I, I, <laughs> I don't think there's going to be much of a problem. It's 27-7 now, South Florida, after the Valdez-Scantling impressive touchdown catch. Beatty brings this out of the end zone. He's going to wish he hadn't. Sutton with a big tackle, but there's a marker down. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 84, half the distance to the goal. First down. Let's Going go back, back to that long touchdown run. Yeah, see, what happens is you got to look at this. The linebacker, Rajon Marbley, he's looking at the guard. The guard right here, right guard, number 78, William Atterbury. You're always tart. If the guard pulls, you go with the guard. But guess what? You got to see through to the back. And the back goes right, the guard goes left. And now you got a seam and no one there. And that's a good job by Tice, just taking it, what the defense gives you. Sometimes those pullers may lie, but you got to see through to the back. And that time, Marbley didn't see through to the running back, Tice. And now Tulane backed way up. Hilliard will get it out to the five. 17th carry tonight for Dontrell Hilliard. 
So USF now outscoring teams in the third quarter 75 to 7. <laughs> and now USF has Tulane on their heels. Remember, this is a slow paced offense, but now you're in catch up mode. So you got to hurry it up a little bit, being down 20 early in the third. Banks, he'll throw it, but he throws it behind. Jabril Cluis, incomplete. Dietrich Nichols, the two time all conference corner, was back there in coverage. Nichols, best buddies, as we talked about at the top of the broadcast with Flowers that grew up together in Miami. Didn't go to the same high school, but came to South Florida to play college football together. We haven't called his name enough tonight, Dietrich Nichols, but he's a football player. He does it all. Pass breakups, interceptions. He's always around the football. Third down and six. Hilliard backing his way close to the first down marker. I think he got it. I think he got it. Leg yes, drive. Yes, he did. Leg drive. Hilliard just willing his way to a first down. I talked about it earlier. The senior running back, six foot 205. Sometimes there's no first down there, but it's just will and want to, and it's keeping those legs moving. Watch his leg. They just keep moving. He's digging, digging, laying down. Can he play at the next level? I think so. He, he's showing that, look, special teams is probably where he's going to find a fit, but another two-lane running back, Orleans Darkwell for the New York Giants, that's who he reminds me of. Sherman Beatty on the run. He'll get two more. Sunday NFL countdown coming at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Sunday morning as the Patriots and Falcons get ready for their rematch. We'll talk about Randy Moss and get Moss. You got Moss. <laughs> We've seen a couple candidates yes, here, we have. <laughs> here tonight. 10 a.m. Eastern NFL countdown also streaming live on the ESPN app. Deep shot, Banks, contact in the secondary. Here come the flags. Clueless and Nichols got tangled up. And I think this is going to be a pass interference call. Banks helped up off the turf. Actually, the pressure and hitting of Banks may actually be a good thing because they're going to get a penalty, I think, on Dietrich Nichols because the pass was underthrown. Pass interference, defense, number three, automatic first down. If Banks has time to throw this football, he may be able to get more air on it, and it may be a good defensive play by Nichols, but when you have an unblocked player coming at your quarterback, he was had to rush the ball. It's been Reeves. He's been a kind of a gnat all day long to the two-lane offense, but no, not that forced an no, air no, no, throw. And when he hit the arm, hit arm Dietrich Nichols. Thank you, official. <laughs> So referee giving us, yeah, let us know. Shut that mic off. <laughs> <laughs> he hit the arm and not the ball. We got it. <laughs> Just the second penalty against USF tonight. They've done a better job with the penalties. That's going to be a one-yard pickup for Hilliard. Now, they had a lot of penalties last week in the game against Cincinnati. 14 total. Just two so far tonight for the Bulls. Yeah. And that'll be a that'll be a good thing for Charlie Strong when he breaks down film. You know, averaging about eight a game, almost nine penalties a game. You, they know that's not how they're going to win football games when you, when you kind of hurt your own self. Play fake. Banks getting pressure from Reeves on his backside, and then the D linemen come in and pull him down at the 21. Bruce Hector, their top pass rusher, got to Banks. It's a loss of nine. You know, we were talking about with a defensive coordinator, Brian Jean-Marie, and the thing about it, I'm laughing because they have a point system at USF. So you can make a big play, you get points, so you get a sack or an interception, and that time, Greg Reeves, he gets up the field. He may not get the points, but he's the one that forced the sack. He forces Banks to go up in the pocket, but his buddy gets the sack. So I don't know if he gets points for that. I might ask tell Coach, hey, I forced that sack. Give me some points. Banks, incomplete. He went to Ankalad, who had the touchdown catch 
in the first half for Tulane. Ronnie Hoggins, good coverage, and Tulane's going to be forced to punt. Yeah, it would have been a difficult catch to make. Trying to find the weak spot in the defense, and good job of having a safety over the top and an underneath defender forcing Banks to have to put a little air on that football. That's how he got the ball too deep, out of bounds. Zachary Block able to get that punt off. It rolls out of bounds at the 42-yard line of USF. ESPN wants to take a break here. 10.22 to go in the third. Our deepest sympathy to the University of South Florida. Last week, USF Assistant Director of Communications Mike Radomski was killed in a car accident on his way home from work. He'd been at the office late working on the Bulls men's basketball media guide. Mike Radomski leaves behind his wife, Christina. Mike was just 29 years old. Ten twenty-two remaining. Here in the third quarter, number 16, South Florida, with a 27-7 lead over the Green Wave here in New Orleans. Time of possession absolutely means nothing in this ballgame because Tulane has had it for almost 25 minutes. USF under 10 minutes, but the score tells the story. Johnson on that last run, short pickup. You know, just their offense is... Big plays are what we've seen from South Florida today. They haven't had long drives, but it's been the big play that is that's why they're on top. Flowers complete to the 45 of Tulane. Now Kana Dillon, the backup tight end with his first touch, and it'll move the chains, a gain of 14. You see the scoring drives. There been some quick ones in there. Yeah, nothing over three minutes. <laughs> Tulane, their first charge, Sam out. We're going to step aside. USF in Tulane territory again when we come back. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Firestone. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. And LegalZoom. Get legal help for your business and family at LegalZoom.com. After the food, the jazz is the best thing about this city. We're in New Orleans. And Quentin Flowers and USF on a first down. Tackled by Rajon Marbley, the middle linebacker for Tulane. He's had a nice night. A loss on the play. Second down, 14 coming up. Team's leading tackler, Marbley. He's been active. You've seen him all over the field. He's a feisty one, a guy. Always going to be around the football. 27-7, South Florida. Trying to stay undefeated, going to 7-0 if they win it. Deep shot, broken up. Well played by Perry Nickerson, the all-conference cornerback for the Green Wave. 13 career interceptions, and he was in pretty good position there. Yeah, never out of phase, just ran with him. He's letting that sideline know, don't try me. Don't try me. I'm not the one. It's a terrific job of, of being there, playing the ball, turning his head back. We call that clinic tape. You know, tomorrow when he watches film, he's like, Coach, put that on the tape. Show that. Show people how to play cornerback. It's a good job by Nickerson. Flowers hit Solomon earlier for a touchdown. Went to him there. Incomplete. Third and 15. Flowers with pressure off the edge. Gets out of the pocket. He's going to turn this into something positive. First down and more. Slides to the 21. What a play by Quinton Flowers. That play appeared to be doomed in the backfield. And he ends up picking up 25 and moving the chains. And they'll go with tempo. Johnson off the handoff. Bounces to the outside. Trying to get the edge stiff arm. And he'll hand up Perry Nickerson to get about two or three. I mean, going back to that last play, Flowers, he's just special. I mean, there's you got to make plays that are off schedule. You have a down two lane player. USF fans don't like that because they know it's an up tempo offense, but 
I mean, what a job by Flowers. I mean, the rush is on, but he finds a way to, Time out. to get out of that pocket. Injured player is got a run of the. Sometimes you got to make a play. If there's nothing there, now you see me, now you don't. It's Flowers getting to the red zone. Nigerian-born Ade Aruna, the senior defensive tackle for Tulane, getting off the field under his own power. So USF is in the red zone, first down and 10. This is the first time in the red zone for either team tonight. Now, when points scored from outside the red zone, and on that slant, Donnie Lewis, good coverage for Tulane to break that up at the two-yard line intended for Valdez Scantling. Donnie Lewis all over that one. He read the slant, and he stepped in front of it. I think he was thinking about six because he read this. He makes this play. That's a touchdown. I think he just got in front of it too, pat, too fast. Ball got on him. It's the one thing about this spread offense is when you get down here in the red zone, the space is condensed. You got to create space. How do they do that? Gonna run and Johnson can't find any space. Zachary Harris, the weak side linebacker, number 40, and a couple other Green Wave players were in there. No game. One of the things you, I always look at is, is red zone touchdown efficiency. And when they get into the red zone, they have not converted into touchdowns enough. Only 54% because the offense doesn't allow them with the space. There is not a lot of space. So how do you create space down here in this condensed part of the field? Flowers on third down, stays on his feet. He stopped, it appears, just short of the first down marker. But it's now fourth down and manageable and about the one and a half. Yeah, I think they go for it. They understand, look, they could put this team away. You go for it. Walking in, touchdown Johnson. There's a red zone score for USF. And they're over 30 points for the 24th straight game, a new NCAA record. Johnson with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year in South Florida. Putting up 30 plus in 24 straight. And that's over the course of two different coaching staffs. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's consistency. It's, it's just doing what they do. And they get up to the ball. And if you're not ready, they catch a napping. And that time. Flowers, you know, after the third down play, the stop short of the first down marker, there is no time to really think. Take a deep breath, Tulane. They, they got to get back on the ball. And this is where USF, their offense, the way the tempo, how fast they go. I mean, that was a walk in touchdown for Johnson. But this is the consistency I talked about 24 consecutive games, over 30 points. You know, a lot of college football teams would love to walk in and say, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to walk in and score 30. And what are you going to do about it? Because that's the way USF has done it 24 times in a row. This program has been built on the foundation of using local talent. There's so much in the state of Florida. And, you know, that's why Charlie Strong seemed like such a good fit for this job, because he had a reputation of recruiting Florida well when he was the defensive coordinator of the Gators as that one's kicked out of bounds. it will be a penalty on the kickoff. And while he was the head coach at Louisville, really recruited the state of Florida. And that's going to continue with him as the leader at the University of South Florida. Currently, 98 players on the roster from Florida. 85 scholarship. The rest recruited walk-ons and walk-ons, so Charlie Strong has a great base to work from, and he just seems like a right fit. He's giving kids in the state of Florida something to think about. 
you got Miami, you got Florida State. You mentioned the Florida Gators, but why not USF? You know, why not USF, a team that's going to be a perennial power, I think, every single year. They're just starting off. And you mentioned why come to USF. You got a senior quarterback in Quentin Flower. That's a big reason as well. Tulane now down 34 to 7. Makes the carry there, no gain. No, it took him a little bit of time to really think about this as far as Charlie Strong and taking his job at USF. I think some people don't understand that Texas job, it's a difficult one. And he didn't want to jump into it and tell us his true feelings, but I, I can kind of speak for him. I'm just saying I, I really believe that the scrutiny that he was under at Texas, it's, it's a different ball game now at USF. Expectations not as high. Banks running for his life. Josh Black in hot pursuit and gets some late pressure from Augie Sanchez. He's had a pick six each of the last two games. The middle linebacker came to USF as a fullback. Willie Taggart moved him to linebacker. He's going to come off the field now, but uh, he's an interesting cat. He wants to be a professional fisherman someday. Yeah, just Banks been banged up all game long, and I think he hit that finger again. I think you're right. On Sanchez's arm. Plant a little pain today. That's going to be incomplete. Cluis, the intended receiver along the sideline. Nichols right there as they ran out of real estate. Fourth down. And this is not four down territory, even though Willie Fritz likes to go for it on fourth down. First three and out tonight for Tulane. I don't think I don't think Banks to tell you this, but uh, I think it's that that finger is why we've seen a lot of balls kind of sail on him a little bit. Zachary Block coming on to punt for the fifth time. Dearness Johnson standing at the 27 yard line. Gonna let it bounce. There's a marker down. There's gonna be a touchback. It's going to be either running into the kicker or roughing the kicker. He calls running into the kicker here, I think. See what they decide to do. Probably running into the kicker with the touchback, but just try to add it on at the end of the play. Tracy Jones saying, hey, come on, help me out here. <laughs> He's got some airtime today. To the kicker, the team, number 18, that penalty is declined. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Quentin Flowers. Pretty good night tonight. But just watch how he sets up. His run, it's making a guy overcommit, and then he hurts you. And then this next one is the one that I love the most. It's You got two guys in the hole. They're sitting there. They're ready to tackle him. But watch the move. It's the hesitation. It's showing you one way but going another. And then when he gets into the open field, I'm sorry. He's just showing you the speed. He takes off. And sometimes you can just say, strike up the band. Let the fight song play. Well, end around to Valdez Scantling. Pick up three. Flowers, 100 passing and a touchdown. Actually, 120 passing and two touchdowns. 100 rushing and a touchdown. So, very good night for Flowers. It's, it's a solid night, uh, one they want to build on, but they feel like this offense still hasn't played a perfect game yet. They're still trying to play a full game because they've had some slow starts, and they know they can't do that as this season goes along. Incomplete. Tender for Darnell Solomon. Quentin Flowers talked about it before. He is a guy you really want to root for because he's had such a tough upbringing. His father, Nathaniel, was killed by a drive-by shooter when he was just seven years old. He lost his mother, Nancy, to cancer when he was still in high school, just 17. 
And in 2014, his oldest brother was shot and killed just a few days before he made his first career start at USF. This guy has had a lot to deal with in his young life, and he has handled it really well. Yeah, he's just doing Very a terrific mature. job. Very mature. And you just watch him. He plays like that. And here he picks up the first down. I mean, he is so elusive back there. Now, you, you were down on the field next to him. Physically, is he lacking anything? Well, I, they list him at six feet tall, and I would dare to say he's probably a tad under that, but I think he has what we say the intangibles of leadership. He can, we know he has a terrific arm, but, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, what is it forecast for him on the next level? Because he is a senior. Does he play quarterback in the National Football League? I, I, I don't know. He's a good college quarterback, but I could see him playing another position in the NFL. You know, maybe a converted running back. We've seen sure. that before, but he's that type of athlete. After he completed that pass to McCants, second down and nine, and he gets away again for a first down and more. Into Tulane territory, finally brought down at the 41 by Lewis. But another 18-yard play for Flowers. He makes it look effortless. That's the thing about it. He makes it look so easy. And he's right back on the line of scrimmage. He's just, that's how this offense is. Attack, attack, attack. Darius Tice right up the gut. Kershaw on that last stop. Second down and five as they get back on the line again quickly. Valdez Scantling on the end around. First down. Inside the 20 and shouldered out at the 19 and more penalty flags. Personal foul, illegal blocking over waste, offense number 55, 15 yard penalty, second down. Third penalty against USF, that's on Eric Mays, the left tackle. But now you could you could see Tulane defensively. They seem to be a little at a loss here against this USF offense. Yeah, I think you're starting to see the big bodies of USF just begin to just fall on them, just hold on to them, and call that an illegal chop block there at the by Mays. But you're just seeing this offense of USF. They haven't had the ball much in this game, but they, they wear on you. They score quick, and I talked about the offensive line. This is one of the reasons why they're a top-10 rushing offense. With those big maulers up front, they wear on you. There he is, Tice, still on his feet. Take a loss. Third down and long here coming up for USF. What have you thought of the uh, South Florida offensive line here tonight? Yeah, I, I, they've done a, an okay job. I think they want to get out to a better start in the beginning of the game. But, you know, they've given Flowers time to throw when he's needed to. But this offense isn't about throwing. It's about getting up on guys. And they've created those holes for the running backs. And then you got a quarterback that can create something when it's not there. I'm going to have to protect Flowers here on third down. Pressure coming right up the middle. Flowers got rid of it and it was nearly intercepted. It was picked off. Deflected and into the hands of Donnie Lewis. First South Florida turnover tonight. The return across the 35 to the 37-yard line. A return of 21 yards. Flowers a little disgusted there. The interception thrown, but it was deflected into the arms of Lewis. A rare interception by Flowers. He hasn't thrown many this year. I think believe only, I think only his second on the year. But this was a ball that was deflected, and it went off of the leg. Yeah, it was kicked by Wilcox. And then tips and overthrows. Tips and overthrows. You never know when a ball comes your way. And Tulane goes back to work. Men, there's penalty flags down. We'll check on him when we come back. Let's get a Penn State Michigan update with Chris Cotter in the studio. First foul, face mask, defense number 43, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down.
All right, Chris, thank you. There's a face mask penalty against USF, so Tulane now in Bulls territory. Kenny Hill for TCU has <laughs> turned into quite a quarterback here this year. Yeah, he didn't start that way in his college career, but you can find the right situation, and now TCU still one of those teams that nobody's talking about yet. Yeah. You no, know, they're just, you know, just kind of sitting there, hanging, hanging, wading in the weeds. And as these games start getting bigger and bigger each week, you got a nice little experienced quarterback in Kenny Hill making plays. Darius Bradwell on that last carry to bring up second down and two for Tulane. Banks the inside handoff. That Sherman Beatty a big run. Gets out of a tackle. He's on his way to the end zone. Beatty dives for the pylon, and he got in. Touchdown. Sherman Beatty. A run of 36 yards in Tulane off the turnover. Gets in the end zone with over two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Just the second play of 20 yards or more for Tulane tonight. And had a lot of big plays. That's one of them. Merrick Glover on to make this a three-score game, but a little false start action. False start. Offense, number 71, five-yard penalty, retry. We'll have to try again. You know, when we talked to Willie Fritz, he said, you know, we got to win the turnover battle tonight if we're going to have a chance against USF. That's the first takeaway for the green way, but they capitalize on it quickly. Yeah, you got to capitalize, and this is what the Tulane offense, they're going to run, 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 and you just got to hope you pop one. They finally got one for a touchdown. Another penalty flag. Hello, horse collar. Holding. Offense, number 84, 10-yard penalty, retry. Well, this is going to be a long extra point <laughs> attempt for Glover. I just saw him coming off the edge, and somebody was on his back. I thought he got him around the neck area, but he just may have pulled him down by the jersey, holding on to him. You know, in high school, I had to play that wing position on field goal block. I just didn't, I mean, field goal, I didn't like it. Those guys coming in there, dipping underneath, and... This is now a 35-yard <laughs> extra point attempt for Glover after the two penalties. No! And now another penalty flag. <laughs> Who's this against? Personal foul, defense, leaping, after this is to the goal, retry. <laughs> so, so now this goes against the Bulls, yeah. half the distance to the goal line, and all of a sudden now it's a chip shot for Glover. Well, we know in college football there is no leaping anymore. If you're right. lined up at the line of scrimmage, there is no leaping. You can behind the, you know, the, the line, but you can't do it if you're actually on the line of scrimmage. So they've taken that out of college football for the safety reasons I understand it so that was one that was enforced it's now a 26 yard extra point attempt that one is good look around are there any penalty flags Kirk no I'm looking uh, no, no just go terrific helmets. that's it <laughs> so that's a 20 point game just taking a look back at that touchdown you know, by Beatty. Tulane just find a way to just pop one finally, and it was the center, Junior Diaz, getting up to the next level. He gets up there, and he, to me, it was a terrific block because he got a chance to shield Augie Sanchez, number 43 of USF, the big-time linebacker for USF. But this is what Tulane wants to do offensively. They haven't done it enough tonight, which is they want to pound you, pound you, pound you, and hopefully pop one. That time, Beatty was able to get behind, but a terrific job by Diaz, the center, getting up to the, neck, to the second level. 
USF, the highest ranked opponent to come in here in the four year history of Yulman Stadium. Tulane coming off that four win year a season ago, the first for Willie Fritz. Sitting at three and three this year. Trying to get back in this one. Down 34 to 14 now. Trying to catch USF off guard. But the Bulls are ready for it. They're going to have great field position as they recover Glover's onside kick. Let's go to the studio for an update with Chris. All right, Chris, thanks. Trayvon Sands recovered that onside kick attempt by Tulane. And now you're giving Quinton Flowers a short field here in New Orleans. Dearness Johnson, good run on first down. He'll get eight. Now you mentioned the blocking earlier for USF. Now this is the time in the game where you just look to the sideline and you know what's going to get called. It's going to be a run play. You just work your combinations and just start pushing guys up front. That's going to be pretty close to a first down for Johnson. And they got it. Monday Night Football, big NFC East matchup. Redskins, Eagles this week. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN. The Redskins have a couple of former Green Wave players on the roster. Yeah, Rob Kelly, running back. Missed last week, but he'll play for the Redskins. And Ryan Grant, receiver, former Tulane Green Wave on the Redskins. Quentin Flowers, the keeper, he'll get four. Kershaw with the stop. Well, Jeremy Hall is a guy who I watched all week long on tape, and he is a mauler. Senior, 6'5", 323, and when he gets off on the ball, he's got bad intentions. Johnson dragging players from behind. Ade Aruna, good to see him back out on the field. He limped off earlier, makes the tackle, but it'll be third down and one as USF still hustling up to the football. Still going fast. That looks like a first down for Johnson. Got it. They don't give you any time to take a breath, I'll tell you that. Now when a helmet off, now that gives you a little bit of a break. But Jeremy Hall, when he gets off, I call him the designated puller because when they pull the a guard, he's usually the guy that's getting out front and creating those holes, creating that space, whether it's Flowers, Johnson, Tice. Number 73 is a guy that, trust me, I, didn't want, I wouldn't want to Go up against him all game long. He's a big man. And they're not going to snap it. That's the end of the third quarter. End of the third quarter. Quentin Flowers and the Bulls, 24 straight games now with 30 points or more. Now they're just trying to tack on to the winning streak which sits at a nation's best 11. Looks good going into the fourth. 261 total offense for Flowers. He's got three touchdowns here in New Orleans. I'm on away. 34 14 South Florida with a school record 11 wins last year. They've got 11 straight wins right now, looking for 12, which would extend the nation's longest winning streak. It's looking good here as they start the fourth, with their quarterback, Quinton Flowers, pulled down for a loss of two. There's the defensive end, Cameron Sample, true freshman, who got the start tonight for senior defensive end, Eldrick Washington, who's out for the year with an ACL. We haven't called his name much tonight. 
Now Flowers to the end zone, incomplete. Now Kana Dillon, the intended receiver. USF with a win tonight will be 7-0. and oh. That will also be a school record. This is a team that just the way they built this team, and it's it's not just this year. You mentioned it. It was years before under Willie Taggart, and now Charlie Strong kind of putting his stamp on it. I mean, this team looks totally different than what you think of a USF team. I mean, they're running the football, playing great defense, and there's not enough good things you could say about they, they are really a number 16 team in the country. Candidate to represent the group of five in the New Year's Six game. That's incomplete. Just shy of the end zone there. Temi Alaka, that's the first time we've called his name tonight for the Bulls. He was the man that Flowers was trying to hit. Perry Nickerson, who has great hair, by the way, in the coverage. <laughs> that's the only thing that concerns me about this team going forward is they've been in games to a point where well, you're scoring 30 points or more and you're making plays, but can this team come from behind and on the arm of their quarterback? That's going to be my question going forward for Flowers and USF. Emilio Nadelman, 13 straight made field goals. Next one sets a school record. New. And that wasn't even close. Misses from 45. That's his first miss since week three against Illinois. But that one was blocked. So this was his first true miss in quite a while. Charlie wanted that one. Kickoff week seven in the NFL with Sunday NFL countdown 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. I'll get you set for the entire week, especially that Patriots Falcons Super Bowl rematch. Kirk should be good. Falcons lost another double digit halftime lead last week. We'll see if they uh, can get past that and against the Patriots. Sherman Beatty on the run for Tulane as they start. This series at the 30-yard line, Juwan Brown brings him down, no game. Now heading off is Beatty. It looks like his arm is drooping a little bit. Banks, complete. Kendall Ardwan, the tight end, and he's got a first down. Out at the 42, gain of 12. <laughs> Look at and his face, face mask <laughs> came off. <laughs> He broke the helmet. <laughs> you don't see that too often. <laughs> Training staff is going to get to work. Equipment manager. Banks pumps. In trouble. Gets out of trouble. And now tripped up at the 47-yard line. Bring up second down at six. Let's go to the studio on update with Chris. LSU two big wins since that Troy loss. There's going to be a pretty good ball game tonight with Ole Miss. Penalty flags come in here. Three flags. I mean, it's been a flag fest <laughs> this game. It, I don't know about accepted penalties, but they've thrown the flag a plenty tonight. Ineligible downfield, offense number 52, that penalty, that penalty is declined. Holding, offense number 63 will be accepted, 10-yard penalty, second down. Cameron Jackal, left guard. Correction, number 64 with the holding penalty. Check that. Corey Dublin, number 64, the true freshman. Penalty. This will be a second down and long for the Green Wave.
You mark it back to the 37. Banks over the middle, caught. There's Taryn Ankalad. Ankalad, first down out to the 44 yard line. That's been there for them all day. They got to go back to more of that. It's beating one on one coverage. And that's what Banks, he's, he's shown me so far. That's been his perfect pass. It's a high percentage pass for me when I see it from here because it's right across, it's right in the middle of the field, but it's off the run, off the run fake. Now Darius Bradwell, great athlete, moved from quarterback to running back in the spring for Tulane. He'll pick up a handful, so second down and seven. You know, this is, this is an offense, Kirk, let's be honest, just not <laughs> built for comebacks, big comebacks, especially late in ball games. Uh, because there's such a run oriented offense. Well, you got to think Coach Fritz, they're really still trying to find the quarterback for this offense. I know Banks is here, but he just got here this semester, you know, the well, last semester. So he's still learning and how to really truly be an option type quarterback. Jadavian Tolls, the intended receiver there. It's going to bring up third down. Yeah, Tanner Lee was a starting quarterback here for a couple of years. But after the coaching change, he transferred to Nebraska. Now Banks here after playing last year at junior college. So he's still fairly new within the offense and they feel like they're turning the corner. They're getting better. But they got to rely on those backs, those two senior running backs. Running the option, Banks keeps, hurdles a defender and gets to the 30 penalty marker down. What an athletic play by Jonathan Banks. Got a holding again. It's going to come back. Too late. Unfortunate because it's a great play by the quarterback and this is why I talk about the the option series He's still learning how to play option quarterback, but you see the athleticism Dangerous in the open field Holding. Offense number 50 10 yard penalty third down And then a holding call that's gonna mark it back To the 49 and a half of Tulane but he completely hurdled Mike Hampton, the defensive back. <laughs> He's got some ability, and they, they knew that when they brought him in. I think they get Tyler Johnson here, number 50. He's a left tackle. And he just, yeah, he just tackles. <laughs> yeah, I think they just tackled. I think it might have been Reeves, who's been in the backfield all game. Banks. Eludes the rush, sets to throw, finds the sideline. Incomplete. Taron Ankalad was the closest receiver, but well over his head. So now fourth down. And Willie Fritz will bring the offense off, and they'll punt it away. A little jawing back and forth there. Yeah, Banks has taken exception to something. Yeah, he's taking exception because... <laughs> I think they're getting in his head a little bit. He's been under duress a lot today. That defensive line, especially Greg Reeves, we talked about it. They've been harassing him, and it's not been a lot of time for him to throw the football. Zachary Block on to punt for the sixth time tonight. Rugby-style kick. Johnson lets it bounce at the 19. He runs up and fields it on the run and gets across the 20 to the 22. It's been a tough night at times for Tulane, and... Their players, Jonathan Banks, showing some frustration now here in the fourth quarter in New Orleans. Tulane down 20, and we saw an angry Jonathan Banks before the break, just like the angry wave. Director of Athletics Troy Dannon sat down with the creator of the angry wave on top of the scoreboard, Barry Kern. Here's our backstage pass. This all started with the idea of bringing back the old Angry Wave mark. Our task being in the Mardi Gras business is to come up with new things and fun stuff. I said, Troy, I said, why don't we, you know, build this giant Angry Wave and have it interactive. One of the things we needed to do was differentiate ourselves. Even in our own league, there's, there's a T at Temple, there's a T at Tulsa, there was a T at Tulane, and the Angry Wave is something that's very unique and does set us apart. It is a good looking logo. I do like it. It was kind of, it was in mothballs for about two decades. They brought it back thanks to 
the athletic director, Troy Dannon. And now they got one on top of the scoreboard here at Yeoman Stadium. We saw it all throughout the student store as well. T-shirts, jerseys. I like it. That's incomplete. Intended for Jannard Phillips. Let's get a Michigan Penn State update again with Chris. All right, Chris, thanks. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Notre Dame. People are going to start talking about him now. Start talking about him. <laughs> Again. 35-7. Wow. <laughs> I didn't expect that from Notre Dame. I didn't. I didn't expect that. And USC, we were talking about earlier about Heisman. Yeah, I guess you can kiss that goodbye, Sam Darnold, because this it's not the USC team I think people were expected this year. No, the preseason hype. They haven't lived up to it. As Flowers takes it out of bounds for a first down after the 35-yard line. Offense, number 89, 10-yard penalty, third down. Boy, we've seen a lot of penalty flags tonight. That's on Mitchell Wilcox. It's going to wipe out the first down run for USF. It says 34 points on the board for USF, but starting to get a little sloppy here. We see penalties. Um, and this one, the part that concerns me is that going forward, for Quentin Flowers, I want to see his completion percentage go up a bit because they're going to have to start showing me that they can win some games with his arm as well. It's not always going to be as easy on the ground. They expect to win this conference. Teams are going to take away that run. He's going to have to force some throw, make some throws, get his offense going. It's a run straight up the middle. The fumble. And the ball comes out. Tulane says they have it. Sean Wilson, the nose tackle, knocked it loose. Their big run stopper up the middle, and South Florida is able to recover. Darius Tice now back on top of it. And it's fourth down, and USF will have to punt. Zachary Dietz, the long snapper, a freshman. For USF. He was the equipment manager last year, Kirk. This is just a great story. Now they're long snapper. He walked on, won the job in full camp. He was picking up orange cones and towels a year ago at this time. <laughs> that one's punted out of bounds by Jonathan Hernandez. We'll see where they mark it out. It's going to be close to midfield. Zachary Dietz snapped that 37 yard punt for Hernandez. Here's Zachary Dietz, the freshman long snapper, bebopping to the music. He's done his job. Yeah, I can go back to the bench. This is last year when he was part of the equipment staff at USF. And he used to mess around with the long snapping when he wasn't doing equipment staff type duties. And the guy said, hey, you're pretty good at this. And Alex Salvato, their regular long snapper the last few years, was going to graduate the city. Why don't you come on out and try out? He did, and he won the job. <laughs> it's, it's a great story, man. It's just you never know who's looking or who's watching. And you look at Dietz, man. He's, he's, a, he's an outstanding long snapper. He gets in there. He snaps it. You know, go out there. Go make a tackle. You know, just go make a tackle. But you always know who the snapper is. You know why? It's no, no gloves, no tape. Yeah. You know, we used to always say just, just out there just bare. Nothing on you. That's how you could tell the long snapper differentiates from the other players but hey he's part of the squad I know is he's pretty happy about that also a rugby player as Darnell Mooney makes that catch gets to the 38 yard line of South Florida this is a two lane offense that has struggled to move the football at times tonight even though they've had the football quite a quite a bit they are winning the time of possession 30 to 20. Banks fakes the handoff, man wide open. Hilliard goes in for the 
touchdown. Maybe coming back. Still a lot of time on the clock. Might be coming back. But you're right, it is coming back. And that was the receiver downfield. Offense, number 50. Five-yard penalty. First down. Sophomore left tackle Tyler Johnson was downfield. I don't like the call either. I, I just don't. I, I think this one, he's behind the line of scrimmage in my opinion. I mean, he's engaged with a defender. So I don't know how you can call the lineman downfield. They call it 50, but to me, he's engaged. You know, right there at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he's just trying oh, to finish his block. terrible call. That's I agree not, with you. That's not a good call. That's that's. That's a call. I think the official thought something different, but he was engaged and just came off the block. That's a, I think the official could have kept the flag in his pocket on that one. Jabril Cluis gets a big chunk here in a first down to the 25-yard line, but they just took a touchdown off the board. That would have brought Tulane to within two scores. Yeah, it was a great play design, a great throw by the quarterback. They executed the play, and the official took that touchdown away from him. But you got to move on. This is part of football. Hey, yeah. you don't get the call sometime, but continue to keep working your offense, and that's what Tulane's doing. They're, they're still handling this drive. Play action rolling out. Banks will throw back across his body. Man wide open again, and it's Hillier. And there are no penalty flags this time. <laughs> so in the end, justice is served as Hilliard scores a touchdown. Light the iron, the... Uh, <laughs> The angry wave, light the angry wave. <laughs> that scoreboard lighting up, and I'll tell you, these Tulane fans are excited. And remember, there's still a year and a half into the Doug Roos, the Willie Fritz era. And this offense, man, that, that's a big play. We call it the old no play. It's everything's going right. The running back goes back. No one's there, and everybody's on defense. You're like, oh no, oh no. Boy, that was two plays on the series that USF didn't account for Hilliard. Now, one was brought back because of the penalty, which was controversial. But then Tulane went back to Hilliard again, wide open. And it's 34-21, the angry wave. ESPN College Football, brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. And KFC's original recipe fried chicken. It's still finger licking good. This is what some adults like to do for fun. The first annual New Orleans zombie run. Uh, this run is part of the crew of Boo, the official Halloween parade of New Orleans. Brian Kern, the brother of Barry Kern, who created the Angry Wave atop the scoreboard, by the way. Yes. He runs that event. So okay. there's a little tie-in. Here's another onside kick by Tulane. USF, like the last time, is able to recover it. It's Tyree McCamps. Another short field for the Bulls. Back to the studio. Chris. Offside. Kicking team. All right, buddy. All right, thanks. Uh, you know, combined 22 national titles between USC and Notre Dame. Uh, there was a big buildup for a big head-to-head -head there. <laughs> and uh, Notre Dame has completely dominated that football game. Notre Dame is back, people. They're back. They'll, they'll probably rise in the rankings. You beat up USC like that. And it looks like another embarrassing loss for the Pac-12 and there have been some in recent weeks yeah there's no top 10 team currently from the Pac-12 and they're definitely showing you that they're not going to be a representative this year so Pac-12 probably looking on the outside in again this year 
And TCU taking care of business as they rep the Big 12. Run for Dearness Johnson. It's going to bring up third down and short for USF as we take a look at the football rankings brought to us by Chick fil A. Penn State leading 28 13 over Michigan. Georgia on bye this week. And Alabama, no trouble with Tennessee today. Johnson through the hole, gets free. Inside the 25 and slides down to the 22 yard line. Gain of 15, USF will move the chains. Wisconsin, that's another team that nobody's really talking about, but right. that's partly because their schedule hasn't been that tough. They still have Michigan on the schedule, but you know, they. They don't really have a really hard schedule this year, and I think that's why people haven't been talking a lot about Wisconsin. But look who's just looking. Who's look? Look who's lurking on there. Ohio State at six. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just on the outside, letting things happen, kind of almost controlling their own destiny. To Ernest Johnson, as we go under six minutes to play here in New Orleans, USF. They are going to likely rise up in the polls. Number 16 coming into the weekend. One of three ranked teams from the American. The American is starting to say, hey, we're, we're part of the power six. You know, the Americans having a good year. Right now they're at 16 and dare I say, they continue to keep winning. It's gonna be first down and goal to go for USF. Another good run for Johnson. How far can this team climb, Clay? I mean, we really have to talk about that. At 16 right now, with a lot of football left, especially in November, could they possibly start sneaking up into a college football playoff talk? Johnson making his way toward the end zone. He gets inside the five, pushed out of bounds. Penalty marker down behind the play. Chop block. Number 77 and 78, 15-yard penalty, first down. William Atterbury, number 78. Number 77 is Marcus Norman on the right side of that USF line. Yeah, he just... A little unfortunate there, a little high-low action. But would you agree that it's likely that the winner of the American is going to be the New Year's Six representative? No, I agree already with three teams in the top 25 this week and Navy receiving votes as well. This is a conference that wants to tell everybody we're, 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 we feel like we're part of the Power Five. We timeout. Too late. Yeah, second charge timeout. Two lane calls and timeout. The AAC is telling everybody they're the Power Six conference. But I, I really believe this, though. And at 16 right now, South Florida, will they be penalized for beating the AAC? If they continue to win, they're an undefeated team. And those teams in the top 10 right now are going to have to play each other. They get knocked off. I'm saying that if they're undefeated by and around the war on I-4, they're going to probably play a ranked UCF team, probably a ranked Memphis team in the conference championship game. Could they be possibly sneak in or talks of the college football playoff? It's just something I think you, it could happen. Well, I, I really believe that. Fall their way for that to happen, but you you see the remaining schedule for South Florida, and it's all apparently gearing up for that day after Thanksgiving game at Central Florida on the 24th of November. UCF beat Navy today. Scott Frost team now six and zero as Solomon makes the catch right around the 20 yard line. That's a gain of six. Lewis on the stop. You mentioned that UCF win. <laughs> I'm telling you, with each win by UCF, you just see the people down in Big Ten country over there in, in Nebraska just hyping that train up. That Scott Frost train is getting hyped up. Yeah. <laughs> they want to bring in one of their own, possibly. The success UCF is having under Frost. The Golden Knights are having a great year. Flowers, all kinds of time. Pressured now off his back foot. He'll just sling it away. 
And it'll be fourth down and goal to go. Interesting decision here. Fourth down, you got to kick the field goal. Still, they make this still a two possession game, only a 16 point lead. This game's still far from over. They kind of crept back in, Tulane just hanging there just enough. This will make it a three score game if Nadelman can bang it home from 36. He missed from 47 earlier, ending a streak of 13 straight made field goals. Out of the hole to Hernandez, it's blocked, and it's scooped up. Donnie Lewis blocked it, and Perry Nickerson scooped it up. He was ready to bring it back, but then he was tackled, but another block kick. Second block kick for Tulane tonight. This one on a field goal attempt. Earlier, it came on an extra point attempt. Just never giving up, just coming on the outside and make a play. I, I've said it before, I had to play that wing position before high school, college. I mean, there's some fast guys coming off that edge. And if you don't get just a piece of them, it's a block. All state proud to be a part of a team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Darnell Mooney with the catch. And here comes Tulane. Just under four minutes to go. They got a timeout in their pocket. That's a 36-yard play for the Green Wave. They able to get to the line of scrimmage, kind of scan what the defense is doing. This is their offense. They're not in a hurry up, but yet they get the play in. Find the right matchup. Stepping up, Jonathan Banks changing direction, still eyeing downfield. Steps out of a tackle, gets to the wide side of the field, and he could go. There's a penalty marker down. This is going to be an illegal block. You saw it coming. I saw three flags thrown. I think every official saw that one. It was right at the point of attack that was the block that kind of opened it up I think all the officials threw the flag on that one it's about three or four flags over in that area right inside the 20 yard line illegal block in the back offense number 84 10 yard penalty first down tight end Charles Jones with the penalty oh what a creative play by Banks though getting out of the pocket Kept his eyes downfield. He was trying to make a play down the field with his arm. And he scoots in there and picks it in the, right here on the right of your screen. Jones comes in. If you can read his number, read his name in the back, leave him alone. So first down and two. Hilliard picks it up, gets a few more. Down to the 16-yard line. Tulane's got a work with some pace here. They're not accustomed to that. You see that substitution by USF up front. They rotate 10 guys and now they seem to looking to be out of whack defensively up front. Play fake to Hilliard. Now Banks. Little shovel pass. Ball is loose. That's a fumble. No, incomplete. Moving on the field is ankle free pass. Second down. It was a late pass to Ardwan. Kendo Ardwan, the tight end who was there. It's kind of the wherewithal to locate a, someone in his own color. But you throw that ball down at his feet and you go to the next down. This is what Banks will start to learn more within this offense. Way to save the down, but this time just throw it at the feet and go to the next play. Hilliard. Still on his feet. Touchdown, Green Wave. They're still in this. No penalty flags. 
which we've had a ton of tonight. This is going to stand. <laughs> That's all effort. That's all effort by the senior. I mentioned it, Dontrell Hilliard, senior, six foot, 205. And it's just want to, will not be denied. Running through arm tackles. He saw the end zone. And that's where he made his way to. Touchdown Tulane. Now Merrick Glover coming on to make this a six point game. Yes. 34 28. South Florida's lead has shrunk to a touchdown. What's coming up next? Let's talk about it with Chris Carter. All right, Chris, thank you. It has been a great year for Josh Allen. And yeah. I think he's still a fun quarterback to watch. He's fun, but you, you, he lost a lot of guys. Lost a running back, Brian Hill. He lost guys defensively. Lost a wide receiver. I mean, it's tough to put all on one guy, but the talent is there for Josh Allen at Wyoming. We'll be getting out to that game as soon as we're done here. Tulane has made this interesting. We have seen a couple of onside attempts for Tulane tonight. This will be their third most likely. USF has fielded them cleanly the two other times they do it again as Tyree McCants on the hands team gives USF a short field with 2.44 to go. As Tulane has come roaring back here late. Well, there's two different scenarios here. If you're South Florida, the ball has to stay in whose hands? Quentin Flowers, your senior quarterback. If you're going to run the ball, the ball has to be in his hands. That's who I trust the most behind this offensive line. This is where you're going to make your hay right now. This is how you win the game. This is one of those Defense moments. The game clock to two minutes and 45 seconds. Also, Tulane's timeouts need to be adjusted to one remaining. Tulane has one remaining timeout. Thank you. I had it wrong here in the the stadium we had a right on the screen two lane with one timeout remaining South Florida has all of theirs but this is flowers time if you're a USF this is flowers time and you're two lane I'm looking for 56 to make a play here Darius Tice second down and five Timeout, Tulane. They're out of timeouts. Penn State, Michigan update. Right back to Chris. It'll be a full minute timeout. Just give him the trophy. <laughs> Just give him the trophy it's now. now. Uh, it's yeah. done, man. Give him the trophy. I mean, honestly, right now, who's the best football player in college right now? Honestly, I mean, when the, the big games have showed up under the lights, I'll tell you this, I know what I'm going to get from Saquon Barkley. I don't know how he can lose it. I'm honestly, really, I'm trying, what player out there can surpass what Barkley has done in, in not even three quarters of a season? I like the sheer athleticism, the sheer raw talent of Lamar Jackson, the quarterback of Louisville, who <laughs> won it last year, but it, but it just yeah. hasn't been the kind of season he had last year. I think with him winning last year, it right. helped out the Heisman campaign. They won a lot of big games, right. especially embarrassing Florida State earlier in the year last year. But Barkley is doing it. Yep. And he is doing it well. To the 39, Terrius Tice. Kershon on the tackle as USF needs a couple of first downs here to bury this game. Yeah, this they cannot turn it over. This it's a big is a down, big down here. here. Number nine. Number nine in white, Quentin Flowers. Flowers. See what he's got. Looked like he was going to sneak up under center Cameron Ruff. He backs off. If I'm USF, I wouldn't mind running this clock all the way down, taking a timeout, thinking about it either. 
lot of room for Tice. He's got the first down. And he's inside the 10. Well, they needed a handful. They get 30. And now USF is knocking on the door. Yeah, that may be the game. Just looking at the clock, that may be the game. What a run by Tice. I mean, that's a nice call there. They shielded off, and Marcus Norman, the right tackle, got a nice little collapse block on the outside, and Tice does the rest. And on first down. Picking his way ahead is Tice. Nothing there. Tonight after the Colorado-Washington State game on ESPN Catch Sports Center at night with Linda Cohn and Stan Verrett, Kirk Herbstreet is going to talk about who his top four is in college football. They're going to break down the college football playoff race after week eight and look at Ben Simmons' first week in the NBA with the 76ers. Individually okay, probably team-wise not so much for Ben Simmons. And, of course, the American League championship series Astros Yankees and right now Houston leading that game Quentin Flowers taking a knee USF gonna get it done got a little ticklish at the end there for <laughs> Charlie Strong it's a great description there that's how it was it was some anxious nervous moments there toward the end but they really they utilize that offensive line that's who this team is it's in the trenches offensively and defensively and that's how they wrap this thing up thirty four twenty eight South Florida is going to get out of here with a victory their twelfth straight win they'll host Houston next week that won't be easy an NCAA record 24 straight games with 30 points or more. Right now, a good bet for the New Year's Six game. For Kirk Morrison and our entire crew on Clay Matvick again. 34-28 the final. We now send you to Wyoming and Boise State with Roy Philpott and Tom Ramsey.